You know, it's important because, you know, a lot of the pioneers, a lot of the architects, hip hop architects are afraid that we are going to make hip hop, um, you know, a cookie cutter educational tool. And it's not, you know, it is something that, um, that you have to feel it's a calling, it's, you have to internalize it. And hip hop is 47 years old. And there are many new people joining the movement now, but this started in 1973, August uh, 11th, 1973. It's so, the so-called um, date in which the infamous party that, uh, that Cool Herc and his sister Cindy Campbell threw in uh, in the Bronx, but we know that hip hop was actually being developed before, with DJs like King Mario and uh, DJ Flowers, which a lot of people don't know about because they're not written about in the history books. So we can't rely on history books. We can't rely on one source. We have to really dig deep. We have to be musicologists. And what I remember growing up with hip hop, you know, in, when I started working in the entertainment industry, a lot of the producers were digging into their crates. They grew up with families that had a lot of these musical, these vinyls of black music, you know, soul music, jazz music, R&B, blues, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And that's what they use. I can't say that right now. You take a beat and a beat making machine, and you're going to make that same type of music without doing the same thing that they were doing, which is really understanding the rhythms, the soul, the message. And so I think it's really important for us to do that. Okay, I'm going to get started with my presentation, and then I'm going to call up my panelists. Um, so that we can get this party started. I'm gonna talk about Hip Hop University real quick because that's what I founded. I hope everyone can see this. I hope it's not too big. Hip Hop University is increasing equity through access, technology, and hip hop based education. Who is Martha Diaz? Well, everyone was talking about their background. So I felt like it's important that I say you know, talk a little bit about myself. So I'm a Colombian American. I'm a first generation, uh, born the first one born here in the United States from both parents who were Colombian. I was raised in Patterson, New Jersey during the 70s and I was a latchkey kid. So I was pretty independent. You know, started working at nine years old, helping my mom clean offices. And by 12, I had my own job in downtown Patterson folding clothes at a boutique. I discovered hip hop in the schoolyard. Um, you know, I would usually go home, but one day my friend was like, come check out this battle. And I thought it was a fight and it was actually a dance battle. And that was my entry point into hip hop. I found my tribe. I found a family. I didn't grow up with any family members. I, hip hop is my family. And it was really, um, a turning point in my life because I was an invisible student in the back, didn't say anything, and I was pretty much ignored. And um, they didn't even know I was a English language learner till I was in fifth grade. So it was pretty uh, a sad, sad childhood in school until I found hip hop. And here I am, I think I was 11 years old. Um, I've made my own t-shirt. Um, with my name on the side, I had a little Playboy bunny in the back, my name was Cookie. So, you know, hip hop's do it yourself uh, uh, style is, is really something that we also need to talk about, right? It's experimenting, it's real, it's playing, it's, it's um, losing your fear and finding your voice and finding your place and reading society and learning how to code switch and all of those things. So I got into the entertainment industry when I was in college. I worked at UMTV Raps. I knew early on I was one of the very few Latinas that was in the space. Um, there were many men 
So I was one of the very few women, but I pushed through and I learned a lot. I had great mentors like Ed Lover and Dr. Dre and Fab Five Freddy. I saw, I've always been a problem solver. So I saw that there were ways in which hip hop could um, solve some of the problems in the community and education was one of them. But before that, I would actually hook up friends um, with jobs. And that's something that hip hop has done. A lot of hip hop moguls, a lot of hip hop entrepreneurs have provided a lot of jobs in, in the community to people who haven't graduated from high school and um, who have been justice involved. We have been the ones to give the opportunities. And so I did that early on and I was invited to speak in panels and and I saw hip hop as this educational tool very early on when I was working as a filmmaker. And, um, and we've used it in a variety of ways and I've developed several organizations, nonprofit, for profits, Hip Hop Association, Hip Hop Odyssey Film Festival, a hip H2O Newsreel, which is a distribution label for the education market, and then Hip Hop Education, which was the first summit in 2002 that gathered people from across the country to discuss hip hop education. And there is really when the movement began. Prior to that, the first panel on hip hop education as a, as a tool of empowerment was, uh, happened in 1992 and at Howard University. They had a panel discussion about that. And of course the University of Michigan, University of Wisconsin also um, had panels, but no one had done a hip hop education summit. And that was when we started to, I started to become an, a community organizer although I was already organizing filmmakers. I've developed a few think tanks where I bring seasoned practitioners together to talk about the movement, to talk about standards and how we see ourselves reforming education. You know, all of the work that you've seen in these two days, this is work that we've been doing without the support of the California Department of Education or any Department of Education, sometimes we'll get some money. You know, of course now things have changed, but before it was like you could get fired to, to bring hip hop in the classroom, but we were still thinking outside of the box. We were saying, we're not gonna do what the music industry did to us. We are gonna have control over this movement. So these think tanks were critical to developing best practices and to develop um, recommendations on how we develop as a field. And there are several reports that I wrote with some colleagues that talk about um, the impact of hip hop education, what we need to do to develop um, pr practitioners. It's not enough that you are, you have life skills and that you have toured around the world. You have to know classroom management. You have to know child psychology, and you know need to and you need to know the history of hip hop, right? And you need to tell me what ten songs Dilla uh, sampled. I mean, you got to get rigorous with this shit. You know, you got to love it. And so, with the Hip Hop Education Center, I managed to do quite a lot. Um, you know, I produced the first hip hop education guidebook and. Um, and several other books. A book that's in the making is The Fresh, Bold, and Soul Deaf because our women in hip hop have been marginalized. We've been erased out of history. We've been muted. And that is no longer going to be the case. We are coming together and you'll be hearing about us very soon. We are doing it. We're doing it now. So I've also produced some movies. It's important. I'm a documentarian. I need to see history facts. And so I've worked with several directors and I was, uh, I curated the first uh, hip hop film series for the Academy and for the M Museum of the Moving Image. And I produced a document, uh, a symposium on documenting and archiving hip hop, which is important with this work that we're doing. We need to document the lesson plans so that, you know, even th these conferences so that we can um, uh, pass on the information. 
And then I teamed up with the Universal Hip Hop Museum to help build the museum and to create standards and to, I mean, all of these people here, none of us, we've never built a museum, but we're doing it our way. So we're looking at what's happening in the field of museum studies and museum world, and we are taking what works for us, but this museum is going to be so different because we are developing it. And so I can't wait for everybody to see it. If you come to New York, hella, hella, hella. I mean, actually you should come to Elliot's event on September 4th. Okay, so why the why a virtual school? Well, I see that the US e-learning market is a $12.8 billion industry, the US mobile market, a six billion dollar industry. What? Look at the global 200 billion and 38 billion. We have not been in this space, and I for the past three years have been thinking quite a bit about this. And, and so I developed Hip Hop University, but it's not, it's, it's not a, just a virtual school that you can take any class. It, it's curated, it's challenge-based. It's for actually that age group, it's changed because now we started in high school, we're now in elementary school and we definitely are targeting low to moderate income communities. And we want students to earn school credit, graduate and you know, get into the workforce. So we personalize every every uh, class for students. We offer culturally re relevant education. So artist residency. So uh, Elliot went to View Park through Hip Hop University. Um, so did, uh, and you'll see other speakers and other people we are connectors. We know the field. We know who has done the work and we, um, we make the recommendations. Of course, we would like to see local artists work with local schools. We don't want someone from New York working over here in LA. Why? You have your local heroes there. You should work with them. However, speaker series are wonderful and all of that. So we do career exploration speaker series, International Youth Council, multimedia library. We have internships courses from across all subjects, gaming, access to a network of artists, professionals, and community. Because when you join the hip hop education movement, you're joining a network. It's a hip hop global family. And that's, if you can get in, because you, you, you got to prove yourself, if you can get in, you will be loved forever. Okay, so in nine months since I launched last year, I've had 200 instructors and students uh, work with Hip Hop Community University. We've done five pilots where we went from six schools, three schools, sorry, three schools to 30 schools in nine months in three states, New York, Minnesota, and um, in California. And we raised 55,000 in, in grants and contracts. And these are some of the schools that we've worked with. Some of the student projects, they've done um, surveys, rubrics. They have actually created rubrics for your classrooms, for your classes, for your courses, just to, to make sure that it meets their students' uh, standards, right? Because you're teaching them, but they want to shape this school. So I've done a lot of design thinking with the students. They've developed websites, they've done podcasts, they've done social media campaigns. And here are some of my partners who you'll meet in a few. And then here are the speaker series. So we've had people like DJ Clientel uh, from the World Wrecking Crew, um, Elliot, Dr. Enongo, who is actually, her name is Samus, the rapper, she's amazing Afrofuturist, Tiffany Miranda, Unlearn the World, Emma Lee, Break Big Lou, and Tasha Iglesias. We've had competitions. We teamed up with Dialect, MC Dialect, and Pockets Change to offer the first national hip hop financial literacy competition. And we invited seasoned practitioners and artists like Sway, Genesis B, and record label owners like Derek McKinney. And we invited a lot of the young artists to perform. We also gave little tidbits of video um, help so that they can make the best songs possible. What's interesting is that the woman, the girl that won this competition, she submitted a beat. We didn't select it, but she submitted a song and she won. I'm going to play her video in a second, but 
yes, we had beats from all over the country and we had songs from all over the country. And what's next is that we're trying to help with student clubs. That's important. We see that um, Will I Am has a, a new robotics club. Uh, Girls Make Beats is already launching their clubs. And then here's Hip Hop Congress. They're coming, they're coming. And so we have, our goal is to expand to 50 schools this year. We're implementing badging, competency certificates, dual high school and college credit, more camps, more internships, more competitions, more speakers, an app, a website, and an international pilot.